Duke Energy is undertaking one of the largest clean energy transformations in North America, which involves retiring coal-fired generation and replacing with cleaner forms of energy. As our CEO Lynn Good says, net zero emissions by 2050 is not just our climate strategy, it's our business strategy. I'm Jack Sullivan, VP of Investor Relations for Duke Energy, and I'm joined here by Catherine Neeby, our Chief Sustainability Officer. She's here today to talk about the company's efforts on environmental stewardship, social responsibility, and corporate governance. Well, before we spend much time looking at where Duke Energy is going on its ESG journey, let's take a minute to reflect on where it's been. The company published its first sustainability report 15 years ago, long before a lot of ESG priorities even came into the conversation. So how would you react on how the company's ESG strategy has evolved over time? When I think about Duke Energy, I have the, the unique privilege of having worked in sustainability previously, um, corporate social responsibility, and now ESG for, for over 20 years. And way back in the early 2000s, I was back here in North Carolina uh, following graduate school, and I bumped into uh, a person who is now a colleague at Duke Energy who is out there talking about climate change and how Duke Energy was taking action. So this is not a new conversation to the company and it's a real privilege to be here and to be part of that, that journey. Uh, we set, as you mentioned in your opening remarks, we set a refreshed uh, agenda with respect to climate in 2019 with our commitment to net zero. Uh, in 2020, around this time last year, we also set a goal to net zero in methane emissions by, by 2030. And we're continuing to build on work that has been underway in lean into topics that are in the conversation today. Environmental justice would be one. The just transition is another. So while we, we've got laser-eyed focus on our net zero commitments. We're continuing to evolve our work forward to reflect the conversation, the needs, and the opportunities of today. Yeah, so Duke and the entire utility industry have done a lot, but there's a whole lot more to do. Can you talk more about the challenges of balancing ESG priorities with that of more traditional business objectives, things like capital allocation and customer expectations and shareholder objectives. It's one of those things that I I find people think that there's there's a false choice between the two. You either do one or you do the other. And I think what we're really seeing now is that you need to do you need to do both. You need to deliver business value and you also need to address societal expectations. Uh, and we're seeing how companies that navigate the risk posed by environmental and social challenges and also create value uh, as they address some of those, those topics are really over time outperforming companies that aren't. And it, it, to the, at the end of the day, to me, it's all about how a culture where you embrace your stakeholders, where you really understand how are our employees responding to the challenges uh, posed by the COVID pandemic? How are our customers navigating the clean energy transition in terms of meeting their demands and their expectations? Uh, how are we thinking about investors and their expectations and meeting those expectations? And when we, we really start to understand all of those different dimensions of stakeholders, all of the different concerns they have, all of the different risks and opportunities they see, when we really optimize and embrace our stakeholders, we really can deliver top-notch performance, not just for our business, but also for our communities. Well, we've kept the conversation pretty high level so far, but now let's get a bit more granular on each of the three components of ESG, beginning with the environment. So Catherine, where does Duke Energy stand on environmental issues? One of the coolest things that I get to say, and I've worked as, as I mentioned in sustainability ESG for 20 years, I've never been able to say that our climate strategy is our business strategy until I came to Duke. This is such a point of distinction. We're deploying over $120 billion in the next decade towards that clean energy transformation, and we're building on a history of success. We've already reduced our emissions over 40% relative to a 2005 baseline, and we're a leader in low carbon intensity. So we've got strong uh, tailwinds that are bringing us today and a real clear plan in place for how we're gonna get 
through that next decade of growth, looking at things like doubling and then tripling renewables, looking at really scaling battery storage, and also things like nuclear as, as we think about a zero emitting technology. And then as we look beyond kind of the 2030, 2035 timeframe, there's a lot of really exciting technology that is out there that I'm so excited to see come to scale and really manifest in our, in our communities and our jurisdictions. Things like, we call them Zelfers, but, but things like, uh, advanced nuclear and hydrogen. And so I think we are, we are only at the beginning of what is going to be an extraordinary transformation that's, that's going to take place over the next, the next handful of years. And we've got a front seat uh, for all of that, all of that excitement and, and joy and transformation. Well, next, let's turn to the social aspect. Our stakeholders are wanting to increase the conversation on environmental justice and just transition. Talk to us about how Duke is addressing those challenges and turning them into opportunities. Environmental justice and the just transition are critically important to Duke Energy. With respect to environmental justice, we're continuing to strengthen our ongoing commitment to the issue, looking at what are the tools and the mechanisms and the policies that we can embed in our business operations to ensure that communities have a seat at the table and are part of a meaningful dialogue with us about the clean energy transformation that is underway. But we're not stopping there. We're also looking at engaging thought leaders, opinion leaders, community leaders to really meet with them and understand what is on their heart, what is on their mind with respect to the clean energy transformation and how can we bring visibility into the energy sector and, and the work underway and how can we think through what are the, the workforce opportunities in the sector as we build that, that next decade of of, of generation, transmission, and distribution. So it's certainly an exciting and a very empowering time right now. Let's wrap up with a conversation on governance and transparency. We've got a strong culture here at Duke on delivering results the right way, where how we go about accomplishing things is just as important as what we set out to accomplish. But there have been increased calls for transparency and more detailed ESG reporting. So Catherine, talk to us about that. Governance is so fundamental to a company's performance. It's, it's kind of the foundation on which everything rests and includes things like a strong ethics and compliance program, the right policies, procedures, et cetera. Um, and that's a lot. But what investors need to know, what other stakeholders need to know is how is a company really, really performing? And nothing builds trust, which is so critical better than transparency and disclosure. So I'm super excited that there's this conversation underway on what are the right disclosures, what are the right metrics, how can we bring visibility into how companies are performing writ large on dimensions of ESG. So it is, it is a great moment in time for us to be uh, opening the doors and sharing more and more information with, with those who care about our company, about the communities where we operate and, and our performance. Um, when I also think about the kind of disclosures that companies can and should be making, I think about kind of ESG materiality. So we spoke earlier about ESG risk. We spoke earlier about ESG opportunities. So really shining a light on how are we navigating some of those risks and how are we creating value for our business and for the communities that we serve. So really excited to tell that story and, and, and to be really thoughtful and intentional with what we're, what we're disclosing. Well, it's an exciting time for our company and our industry as we carry out large scale clean energy transformation. Catherine, thanks for joining me today to share your insights on all things ESG. We appreciate your time and your leadership.